Good morning. It is Thursday, November 19th, 2015. My name's Hatton Humphrey, and this is driving me crazy. Uh, as I said, it's November. I think I'm enjoying the global warming a little bit. Um, but I didn't record a video to talk about the weather. Now, I'm I have to say, first of all, um, as I said on Front Porch Political Talk on Sunday, you know, our hearts and our prayers are with the people of France and those that were affected by uh, the violent terrorist acts carried out by jihadis in that country. But I also have to express my severe disappointment with the political class in the United States. And I say that that way, the political class, not because, because it's not Democrat, it's not liberal, it's not Republican, it's not conservative, it's not pastafarian, it's not Christian, it's not Muslim, it's... Oh, it's, it's that's, that's my first response anytime a, a news story or an opinion piece about France comes on the air. Is just that really exasperated sigh. Now, Here's the problem. There is a nugget of truth and a nugget of reality in what every single person is saying. The problem is, is that for almost every one of those, it's playing specifically to their base. I'll take the GOP position. The GOP position and the position of, you know, I think it's up to 30 state governors, um, most of the presidential candidates on the uh, on the Republican side have said, we need to stop the refugees. We need to stop bringing, bringing people into this country that we haven't vetted. Now, the nugget of truth in this statement is that uh, there is a percentage of the refugees that are coming from Syria, from Iraq, from Afghanistan that are single men between the ages of 18 and 35, which is the prime demographic for a jihadi. Single Muslim men or married Muslim men that are not with their families. Again, prime demographic. However, <laughs> I, 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 I'm going to say this, and I'm going to say it with a straight face because it's dead serious. That's not all of the refugees. It's not only single or married Muslim men without their families between the ages of 18 and 35. You do have children. You do have mothers. However, we have also seen that Wahhabi Islam and, and Wahhabism is, is the aspect of Islam that, that Al-Qaeda tied to. I'm not 100% certain that ISIS or ISIL ties to that as well it can very easily radicalize women and children. When you have children parading around dressed up as suicide bombers, yeah, whether they know what they're talking about or not, that's not a good sign. So, should we close the border? Should we should we stop, you know, the the Syrian refugees from being placed? No, not in my opinion. 
Now, listen to an interview this morning, which brings me to the, to the position of the left. I've heard two different things. First of all, it's not the purview of the state governors to stop, to say who can and who cannot be placed as refugees within their states. That is a correct and accurate statement. But I heard an, I heard an interview with uh, my Governor Cuomo who said, you know, we have to trust, and that's a big word, the federal government in their vetting process, in their in their screening process. Okay, so what the attacks in France fed directly to the statements made by the GOP. The statements made by the GOP fed directly to the Democrats, and now the statements made by the Democrats are feeding right back to the GOP. This is the this is Twisted Politics 101. Take what is being said, put a specific spin on it, and make it in good, nice, soundbite nugget sizes, and watch the analysts go crazy. There, got it. I went crazy. You happy now? So there's there's that piece. The other thing that I've heard is, well, by refusing the refugees, you're doing exactly what ISIS wants you to do. And I can see the logic in that statement. Unfortunately, it's also a case of, do we really care what ISIS thinks? And for some, the answer is no. They are a, uh, a, a brutal quasi-state. I, I love the phrase that I've heard lately. They are a pseudo-caliphate. That's what I've heard them referred to as yeah, on uh, BBC and some other places. A pseudo-caliphate. I'll put that word. But by the same token, they are going into areas, setting up their twisted form of leadership, and if the refugees are rejected, where do they go? Back to Syria? Back to whatever hell it is that they are escaping? Quite possibly. And that is partially what ISIL, ISIS, wants. They want people that hate America and hate the West. So it's, it's this weird, twisted logic. And again, it boils down to, do you care? And as much a fan of firepower as I am, I also know that you can't bomb an entire peoples out of existence. That is not humane, nor is it truly effective. So, part of what, I mean, even military missions do, and, and my, my fellow veterans can attest to this, there are humanitarian operations that fall under the military command to help win the hearts and minds of the populace. Sending people that have gone through hell to get out of Syria, sending them somewhere else because of the actions of the group that they're running away from, or a we would, ho we would hope the vast percentage of them are. That, that, that doesn't work to win the hearts and minds of those people. The other 
question is, is then what happens if, and I say if, not when, rather than the opposite, there is another attack. There will be another attack. But if there is another attack on American soil, and if it is perpetrated, again, by Muslims that are hell-bent on killing as many people as they can, I give credit to our security agencies. It hasn't happened. There have been some attempts stopped, but um, it hasn't happened. How does that then change the narrative? And, and that's a crystal ball that I don't want to shake up right now. So, it, it's it, it, but it's this twisted politics 101 that is is what has been driving me crazy. And I, I wanted to share my thoughts on that. You know, there's, there, this is not a black and white situation. Nor is it one that 10, 15 minutes on YouTube is going to change. It's a conversation. And it's a conversation that I think we should have, but I think we should have without jumping down each other's throats and knowing that we are going to talk from our our political base. You know, the first reaction that, that France had, I cheered. And that was bomb the crap out of a known ISIS stronghold. And then to do something very, very sneaky. Not even, no, not even sneaky. Very, very smart. They went to NATO and said, you see this article here in this treaty that everybody has signed? It says that if we call for military assistance because we have been attacked by a, by a location, NATO must provide support. Guess what, guys? We're calling on you for help. I thought that was smart. So, what do you think? Let's have this conversation. Let's, let, let's talk about this. Post comments below in the message board or in the, in the, in the comment section. Or email them, conservativepodcast at gmail.com. Tweet them at EC Conservative. If you liked what you heard, join us on Sunday nights for our recording sessions or listen, listen to the podcast at Front Porch Political Talk or Front Porch frontporchtalk.net I get for trying to drive and talk at the same time thanks a lot for watching everybody have a wonderful day and uh, eh, enjoy the global warming <laughs>